for one of the special guests at Sunday's ball was Natalia Kaspersky. She is the CEO of data protection company InfoWatch, and she joins me now here in our London studio. So um, you're based in Russia, aren't you, Natalia? Uh, yes, in Moscow. In Moscow. But you're here also for this ball? For the ball, yes. How important are these social events? Well, I think when the relationship between our countries are cooling, then somebody should put the um, direct correspondence because we, uh, I think we believe to one human society, we live in one planet and we need to communicate to each other. But when we talk about Moscow and London, why is London such a choice place to come for wealthy Russians? Russians? Well, I think it's a financial centre is first. It's quite close to Russia in compared to America. And um, there are many people, it's simple useful connection point. Many businessmen are there, maybe. But, but there's a, there's a sizable uh, community of particularly wealthy Russians who choose to be in London. London is a, they've made London a home away from home. And if they're bringing their debutante balls here, that's quite a significant statement, isn't it, for their young people to meet in London rather than perhaps in Moscow or St. Petersburg? Mm, yes, for example. But as I understood, they do it in different parts of the world. Yeah. And London is maybe... Well, it's only the second ball. They did it in Vienna, they did it in Moscow. So there have been traditional... Yeah, traditional I, th I think many of us know that Vienna and Viennese balls have for a long time attracted um, Russians as well. But there is a significant amount of rich Russians in London. They, they have chosen to make London their home. This is despite sanctions, despite the difficult times that the European Union and Russia is having at the moment. Um, why is London so popular, though, for business people from Russia, would you say? Or do you find that there's another capital city which really has something more competitive to offer? Uh, it is a question which um, I cannot answer properly, I think, <laughs> because I don't live in London. Uh, I do my business from Russia. And um, I know definitely some people who, who live here and they find it as a good destination point, as I yeah. Uh, mentioned already for their businesses. But, you know, with modern technologies, it's possible to do business from anywhere. That's Some people true. go for Thailand. That's true. <laughs> so let's talk, about, let's talk about Russia's relationship with other countries, including the European uh -huh. Union. Um, how concerned are you about the strained relationships as a business person, as the guest of honour here at this Russian debutante ball? How concerned are you about the rhetoric that we've seen from Moscow uh, and Brussels? Yeah, from both sides, I would mm. say, <laughs> yes. Um, of course, it doesn't help. I'm a member, our company is a member of Russian-British Chamber of Commerce. And the businessmen from both sides, uh, the, the English businessmen, I watch mostly the English businessmen working in Russia. They're very much concerned because they've been established the relationship and invested a lot of money, and now they don't know what to do because uh, the country prescribed them to go out of yeah. the do you think, to develop. Would you, do you think that, OK, admittedly, you may still live in Moscow, but do you think that a lot of wealthy Russian people who may have wanted to have a foot in different countries, so one residence in Moscow, one residence in, say, Monaco, London, New York City, wherever it is, will be deterred from coming west and having that sort of peripatetic lifestyle partly because of the difficult relationship that Russia has with the US and Europe at the moment? I, I don't think so, honestly speaking. I say that it's now a big turn into the east, and now there's more and more connections with, with the Chinese businessmen. Um, Chinese have difficult mentality, I would say. It is difficult to work with them. But uh, the modern sanctions forcing the businessmen to turn the other way around. So. All right, Natalia Kaspersky, thank you very much for joining us there. Natalia Kaspersky, they're the CEO of the data protection company InfoWatch, joining us in our London studio. And as I was saying before, Natalia was the guest of honour there at that second annual Russian ball in London last night.